These abandoned houses in the Namibian desert were once homes, but the harshness of the climate proved too much for their inhabitants, and they now stand empty. The atmosphere punishes living beings with sudden changes of temperature and humidity, forcing them to seek out places in which to shelter for at least a few hours each day. All animals need some form of refuge, have a symbol in which to rest, reproduce, store food or hide from their enemies. The home in the form of a burrow, nest or den, though it may be just a simple rocky hollow, is vital for life. And so animals have developed different strategies to obtain one, depending on where they live, the climate and the available materials in the different ecosystems of the earth. Human beings had to solve these same problems and underwent a technical evolution from caves to large complex constructions. But human dwellings are determined not only by questions of climate and safety. The needs and lifestyle of each culture are also different. All the survivors of the planet Earth need a place to live. A shelter is essentially and above all a place to which to escape, a hideaway affording protection from predators and enemies. Many have, in addition, chosen to live in communities. This means they had to build homes which were larger but also safer because while some worked, others could stand guard. The first hominids also formed part of the diet of the great wild carnivores, and one form of defense was to take shelter in caves and natural hiding places. But soon these basic primitive cave dwellings and comfortably dark and damp proved inadequate for a growing human population. And at the same time as man mastered fire, he was better able to keep predators at bay. But the caves were ideal for use as spiritual and magical sanctuaries. They thus became the shelters of the ancestors, places of worship in which to house the dead, preserving and protecting the riches that were to take with them into the other life. Here in Peru, centuries ago, the Chachapoya built these dwellings in inaccessible caves in which they lay to rest their illustrious dead to keep them safe from water and grave robbers alike. Very close by on a precipice, they also placed these sarcophagi containing mummies. When ancient cultures like this one left the caves to the dead, they began to build more suitable shelters for the living, and so the first settlements were born. The Chachapoya were called the Cloud People. Their civilization was conquered by the Incas in the 15th century before the arrival of the Spanish. The inhabitants of these first large communal shelters needed to protect their crops and cattle from attacks by other human groups. Thus, the great fortified city-states were born and fought against each other. But protected inside the shelters he built, man spread out across the earth to both cold, humid regions and burning deserts. All other animals have had to face the same problems of climate and safety, and have overcome them with different adaptation strategies. One of the oldest methods is fortifying the body itself, turning the skin into protective armor. It's rather like carrying your house on your back, 
an onerous though efficient solution. But always having to carry your shelter with you reduces mobility, making movement slow and noisy, and therefore liable to attract predators. This python is coming down from its branch to find out if this moving object is edible. But the tortoise doesn't appear to be too concerned at its lack of discretion, because it knows that in the case of an emergency, salvation is close at hand, on its back to be precise. The tortoise is so sure of itself that when the two come face to face, it is the snake that feels intimidated, while the armor-plated reptile barely alters its course and continues impassively on its way. The efficient passive defense of a portable home has also been adopted by other survivors the length and breadth of our planet. <laughs> 